the format of being robot. I think we all got sick as kids and or teenagers. It happens to all of us. It happened to me a lot in particular though. Maybe it was just the living conditions I was in or the fact I lived in a particularly big city where people get sick all the time. I would get sick around once every month or so. I know that doesn't sound too bad, but for me, it was a living nightmare. I would have to stay in bed the whole day chomping on bland crackers and drinking water until I got better. My parents were clean freaks so they wouldn't allow me to leave my room until I was better, for fear I would cover everything in the house my germs. Their words not mine. While this would happen often, it would be over relatively quickly and nothing crazy would actually happen. I'd just stay in bed for the whole day and it would pass over within a day or so. Though there was that one time I had to stay in bed for a whole week because of the flu, that's a story for another day. But one incident in particular was certainly more memorable than the others, and is a moment I'll never forget. I was homesick one day, big surprise, and I felt particularly bad that day. I had a massive fever, and since I wasn't moving that much, my entire body hurt like hell. I was 15 at the time and my parents were at the grocery store, leaving me home alone to watch the house. I was in my room laying in bed with tissues stuffed in my nose and a bottle of water next to me. I was pretty bored just laying there doing nothing, so I decided to go downstairs and watch some TV, considering my parents were at home and wouldn't have known what I was doing. So I made my way downstairs ever slowly and slumped down on the couch. I grabbed the remote off of the coffee table and turned the TV on. It took a bit for the TV to activate, but after a minute or so, it eventually started working. The channel that it was currently on was Nickelodeon. I had always loved Nickelodeon as a child and still do now. The show that was currently airing was Spongebob. I had always loved watching Spongebob as a kid and still do now. So I was excited to watch an episode, since I hadn't in a long time. Now here's where things get strange. I had turned the TV on just as the episode began, so as you would expect, it started out with the normal intro, nothing strange so far. Once the intro ended, it showed the title card. The title of the episode was, The Summoning. I thought that was pretty strange considering I had never heard of this episode before. But I figured it was just a brand new episode making its first premiere. The bubble transition appeared and showed an outside view of the Krusty Krab. From what I could see, it appeared to be a very busy day at the Krusty Krab. The animation appeared to be done in the style used from seasons 9 and onward, confirming that this was, in fact, a newer episode. It cut into the inside of the Krusty Krab. There was a long line of customers. Sitting by the cash register was of course Squidward. The person in the front of the line said, I'll have one Krabby Patty and fries please. Squidward sighed and called out to Spongebob. Spongebob, I need one Krabby Patty and fries. Squidward looked at Spongebob through the window behind him, and saw that Spongebob was dancing in the kitchen to an upbeat pop song. He was jumping around, dancing around and kicking his legs in the air with the most oblivious smile on his face. Spongebob! Squidward called out for him again. Spongebob turned around with one of his legs still in the air. However, as he was doing this, one of his shoes flew off his foot and hit Squidward right in the head. Spongebob laughed at this, and Squidward looked pissed. Squidward attempted to tackle Spongebob by jumping through the window, and ended up landing face first on the stove. He let out a high-pitched scream and fell to the floor with burn marks on his face. Boo, Squidward, are you okay? Spongebob asked. Squidward got up and looked even more pissed. No, you blubbering buffoon! I'm gonna- Squidward was cut off by the sound of the doors opening. It was Patrick, wearing a blindfold and wielding a jelly fishing net. Hey Spongebob, you want to go jelly fishing? Patrick called out, swinging his net around. Squidward walked out the kitchen door and walked up to Patrick. What do you want, Patrick? Squidward said, still angry. Wait, who's there? Me! <laughs> Patrick said, still waving his net around. It's me, you stupid it- Ouch! Patrick annoyingly hit Squidward in the face with his net. Squidward held his face and let out a few pain-filled grunts. 
He stumbled over and knocked over a few tables and chairs, some of them even having customers sitting on them. Hey watch where you're going! A patron called out. Squidward continued to stumble until he eventually bumped into a pole and fell over. A few of the patrons actually got up and left, supposedly because Squidward's actions were disturbing the peace. Mr. Krabs burst through his office door and yelled. What in the name of King Neptune is going on here? Squidward got up off the ground covered in bruises and still having burn marks on his face. Ah, oh, SpongeBob and Patrick are being annoying and ruining my day. Squidward said in response. Well, maybe you should stop your complaining and get back to work, Mr. Squidward. Mr. Krabs called out. He went back into his office and slammed the door. Squidward's face turned red with rage. I hate this stupid town and all the residents within it. Squidward yelled with fury. I'm going home! Squidward stopped out the door and made his way back to his house. As he was walking back to his house, a suspicious black car pulled up in front of him, stopping Squidward in his tracks. Three suspicious robbed figures with black fedoras and sunglasses got out of the car and approached Squidward. Excuse me sir, can we have a moment of your time? One of the robed figures asked in a soft voice. Ah, uh, well what? Squidward responded in confusion. The robed figure motioned his hands towards the car, insinuating that he wanted Squidward to get inside it. Come. The robed figure said. Squidward and the robed figures got in the car, with Squidward in the backseat squished between two other robed figures that sat next to him. One of the robed figures got into the driver's seat of the car, put on his seatbelt and drove off. Squidward had an uncomfortable and concerned look on his face. What is going on? What's happening? Squidward asked. All right, listen here tentacle head. The robed figure in the driving seat said. We know who you are, we always have. We're quite familiar with you in fact, and we're here to help you. Help me, but how? Squidward asked. Are you familiar with a certain sea sponge working at a certain fast food joint? The robed figure asked. You mean SpongeBob, yes. Squidward replied. And you hate him right, like thoroughly despise? The robed figure asked. Ah, uh, yeah. Squidward said. Well we might be able to do something about that, free of cost. Said the robed figure. We are familiar with someone of high power, basically a god and he might be able to do a little something with your all spongy friend. I wouldn't exactly call him my friend, but I'm intrigued. Squidward responded. All right, I'll take you to our place and well discuss things there. The robed figure said. Oh, and by the way, you can call me ZZ. Um, all right, said Squidward. I gotta admit, this episode seemed normal, if not a bit weird. I didn't think it could get any weirder, but boy was I wrong. The bubble transition appeared and it showed Squidward, ZZ and the rest of the robed figures arriving at their destination, a large, ancient cobblestone pyramid perched on a sandy hill with stairs leading up to the entrance. Moss and other forms of plant life engulfed the pyramid. This is the place, said ZZ. Everyone stepped out of the car and made their way towards the entrance. What is this place? Squidward asked. You'll see soon enough, come on. ZZ said. ZZ opened a pair of double doors, and it cut to show the inside of the pyramid. It was a large square-shaped room with a large pentagram in the middle and what looked to be a deactivated portal against the back wall. A large chandelier hung from the ceiling, lighting up the area. There were a few tables pressed against the side walls with a few books and other items on them. Woo woo what in the the, the wa? Squidward stuttered. I see you must be confused said ZZ. Allow me to explain. This is where we will be summoning the god I mentioned earlier. If all goes according to plan, he should snatch the sponge like an apple off a tree and take him away forever. This sounds like a bit of a risk, don't you think? Squidward asked. Nah. ZZ replied. Go get your yellow friend and bring him back here so we can begin the ceremony. We'll be waiting. I'm okay. Be right back, said Squidward. Squidward ran out to the door and ran over to the Krusty Krab to fetch SpongeBob. The bubble transition appeared and showed an outside view of the Krusty Krab, with Squidward running towards the entrance. It cut to an inside view of the Krusty Krab. Squidward burst through the door before stopping to take a breath, sweat beaded down his face. 
SpongeBob, SpongeBob, Squidward said in between breaths. SpongeBob then burst through the kitchen door. Squidward, SpongeBob yelled in excitement. You're back. Where have you been? Never mind that, said Squidward. Look, I have something I want to show you. Come with me. Squidward grabbed SpongeBob's hand. Okay, SpongeBob said. Squidward and SpongeBob then proceeded to walk out the door and make their way to the temple. So where are you taking me? SpongeBob asked. Oh, you'll see. He he he. Squidward replied. He had a sinister look on his face as he let out a maniacal laugh. The bubble transition appeared and showed an outside view of the pyramid, with Squidward and SpongeBob walking towards the entrance. It cut to the inside of the pyramid with SpongeBob and Squidward walking through the door. Zizi, boys, I brought him here, Squidward announced. SpongeBob's eyes lit up with awe as he stared at the dimly lit interior. The chandelier had been turned off and instead, a horde of candles circling the pentagram lit up the room. Wow! SpongeBob said in awe. Pretty lights! SpongeBob was completely oblivious to what was about to happen. Ah yes, little sponge dude. ZZ said. We've been expecting you. Stand right here for me. He pointed towards the center of the pentagram. Hee hee, okay. SpongeBob said as he gracefully walked over to the center of the pentagram. Yo squid face, you ready? ZZ asked. It's Squidward, and yes I am. Squidward replied. All right, stand next to me, said ZZ. Squidward made his way next to ZZ. ZZ whipped out a book from thin air and said. Okay Squidward, repeat after me. Yeah, yes sir, Squidward replied. All right, ZZ said as he opened up his book and turned the pages for a few seconds. Oh my great god of destruction, sweet mother of all things evil, accept my offer, my sacrifice, my gift to you my sweet prince. Squidward repeated the phrase as well as the other robed figures that were there as well. Oh my great god of destruction, sweet mother of all things evil, accept my offer, my sacrifice, my gift to you my sweet prince. They repeated this phrase once more, and during that, the ground started shaking fiercely and the portal lit up and began blowing as it activated. Suddenly, a large, thin, human-like creature with black skin, red eyes and spikes all over climbed out of the portal. It completely towered over Squidward, SpongeBob and the others. The creature let out a loud, ground-shaking roar, exposing his long sharp teeth and his snake-like tongue. SpongeBob and Squidward let out a loud scream and curled up in a ball on the floor out of fear. Food, food, I need food. The creature boomed. Food, Squidward said. What is he talking about? Uh, uh nothing, ZZ replied. Ah, uh, my lord, I have a special something for you. He picked up SpongeBob off the ground and held it up for the creature to see. <laughs> the creature said, stroking his chin. I'll accept it. The creature held out his hand and ZZ placed SpongeBob in the palm of its hand. W what's happening? Said SpongeBob shakily. Oh nothing, eh he he. ZZ replied. Hmm, thank you. Said the monstrous creature as he slowly made his way through the portal, letting out an evil, echoing laugh the whole way. Once it made its way through the portal, the ground stopped shaking and the portal deactivated. Squidward was staring in awe at what had just happened. Woo what just who happened? Said Squidward still in awe and confusion. The mission was successful. ZZ replied. And now your spongy friend is gone forever, and he is never coming back. I hope you're happy. And now woo are you seri so serious? Squidward stuttered. Indeed. ZZ replied. You can live the rest of your life in peace and prosperity. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Alone, with no bothering, no sponge to bug you 24-7, nothing, nothing but peace and quiet, forever. Squidward just stood there in complete shock at the fact he would never have to see SpongeBob ever again. Oh my, oh my god, he's actually gone. I can't believe this is happening. Aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh, I'm free. Squidward ran out the door still yelling. I'm free. The bubble transition appeared and showed the outside of Squidward's house, with Squidward still running through the front door. It then cut to the inside of Squidward's house as he bursted through his door. 
He gleefully jumped onto the couch and jumped up and down on it. Ha <laughs> ha! SpongeBob is finally gone! He shouted. He finally calmed himself down and slumped down on the couch. Ah, uh, now I can finally watch some TV, alone, without SpongeBob bothering me. He grabbed the TV remote off the couch and turned on the TV. He had a satisfied look on his face. It stayed on this shot for seven seconds. Squidward let out a sigh of pleasure and relief. It then cut to Squidward at the Krusty Krab in front of the cash register with that same satisfied expression on his face. He looked over at the window behind him where he would expect SpongeBob to be. But there was of course, no SpongeBob. Squidward let out another pleasured sigh. It then cut to a shot of Squidward walking through a park, but this time, his face seemed more sad. He still had the satisfied look on his face, but it still had a hint of sadness and monotone in it. He let out another pleasured sigh, but now sounded more dissatisfied than before. It then cut to Squidward sitting on a parked bench, with an even more sad face than before. He then again let out another sigh, this time sounding even more sad and monotone. This cycle would continue with Squidward in different places, eating at a fancy restaurant, at a concert, walking home, entering his home, with his face getting more and more monotone and depressed and his size becoming more and more dissatisfied. It finally ended with Squidward laying in his bed with a completely monotone and depressed looking face. As he was laying in his bed, Squidward said in a monotone, Ha! Ah. It then faded to a flashback showing a montage of different clips showing Spongebob and Squidward doing various different fun things together, going to an amusement park, riding a roller coaster, eating cotton candy together, playing at a park, and it ended with a clip of the two hugging. The flashback ends and fades back to Squidward still laying in his bed. Ha! Maybe Spongebob isn't so bad! Squidward said in a soft voice. Maybe! Maybe! He's more important to my life than I thought. I think I gotta get him back. It then cut to an outside view of Squidward's house with Squidward bursting through the door and sprinting down the road to the pyramid. He was determined to get SpongeBob back and fix this mistake. It showed Squidward running through various locations including a city, a meadow, a desert, and even a volcanic looking area until finally reaching the pyramid. It cut to an inside view of the pyramid and showed Squidward kicking the door down. He walked inside and shouted. Hey scary monster dude! Nothing happened. Haha! Uh -huh. uh -huh. The chant! Oh my great god of destruction, sweet mother of all things evil! Accept my offer, my sacrifice, my gift to you, my sweet prince! Suddenly the ground began shaking and the portal lit up and activated. Suddenly the creature emerged from the portal and let out a ground-shaking roar. Where is my food? The creature boomed. Hi! Ah! Scary monster man! Squidward said. I actually don't have any food for you. I was just wondering if I could have my friend SpongeBob back. SpongeBob? Said the creature. You mean this? The creature held out his hand, and in the palm of the creature laid SpongeBob. His wrists were tied and his mouth had a piece of tape over it. He was sprinkled in what appeared to be salt and drizzled in what appeared to be a one steak sauce. I was just about to eat the little fella. Eat him? Said Squidward. ZZ never mentioned that. If I had known that before, I never would have agreed to this. SpongeBob's annoying and all, but he doesn't deserve to get eaten. Hmm. Well, too bad, so sad. The creature said. He leaned his head back and expanded his jaw exposing all his wide, sharp teeth and held SpongeBob over it. Squidward started to panic. What was he gonna do to stop this monster from eating SpongeBob? Suddenly, he notices something. Sitting on one of the tables sat a blaster ray. Squidward had no other choice. He picked up the blaster ray off the table and shot the creature. The shot from the blaster ray created an aura around the creature. The creature let out a loud screech before exploding and causing a massive earthquake. SpongeBob fell out of the creature's hand as it exploded. Luckily, Squidward caught SpongeBob in his hands as he fell. All right, come on, SpongeBob. We gotta get out of here now. Squidward said frantically. Okay. SpongeBob replied. Squidward ran out the doors as fast as he could with SpongeBob still in his arms. 
Right as he made it out the door, the pyramid began to crumble and crack, and eventually exploded into a million pieces. Squidward managed to barely survive the explosion by diving down the stairs at the last possible moment. They landed on the harsh concrete relatively and scraped. When they looked behind them, all that was left of the pyramid was a cloud of dust and a hill. Squidward started panting and placed SpongeBob on the ground. Oh Squidward, you saved me! Said SpongeBob as he hugged Squidward and began to cry tears of joy. Oh SpongeBob, I'm so sorry! Squidward said as he hugged SpongeBob back. I never should have fed you to that horrible creature. I didn't know this would have happened. Squidward lets go of SpongeBob. Yeah, no, SpongeBob, I realized something today. Even though you can be really annoying sometimes and can ruin my day a lot, you give my life the excitement it really needs. You know, I never thought I'd ever say this in my entire life, but I like you as a friend, SpongeBob. Oh, I like you as a friend to Squidward. SpongeBob said as he wrapped his arm around Squidward's shoulders. Come on, buddy, let's go home. Squidward said as he wrapped his arm around SpongeBob's shoulder. They then walked off into the sunset together as friends. The bubble transition appeared and it transitioned to an outside view of the Krusty Krab. It then cut to the kitchen where I saw SpongeBob dancing the same dance to the same tune as before. Squidward then peered through the window and said, Hey SpongeBob, you mind if I join you? Sure Squidward, come on. SpongeBob replied. Squidward then dived through the window and successfully avoided the stove this time. He landed on the floor and then began to dance in perfect sync with SpongeBob. It stayed on this for a few seconds before cutting to the outside of the Krusty Krab. SpongeBob and Squidward's laughter could be heard, and with that the episode faded to black and finally ended. So yeah, that was the episode. Admittedly, it was pretty freaky. I mean, rituals, sacrifice, SpongeBob getting eaten by a malicious demon. That's pretty messed up for a show as get friendly as SpongeBob to get into. And god that freaking creature that almost ate SpongeBob is gonna give me nightmares. I attempted to do some research on this episode but couldn't find anything. But I did find something that could potentially give me an answer. According to my research, I learned that having a high fever can potentially cause hallucinations. But in what I read, it said it only affected some people, so I'm not entirely sure. Although I can say this, even though that episode is freaky as all hell, I actually really enjoyed it. It was fun, action-packed and actually got a nice bit of character development for Squidward. So if this episode is real and ever airs on TV, I would highly recommend giving it a look. Although, I can't say for sure whether or not this episode is real or not. It might have just been a hallucination caused by my fever, or it could have been something entirely different. I can never be sure though, and I don't think I'll ever get an answer.